Hello and welcome to Forest Tech. As always, we bring you tech reviews, tips and tutorials, and this is another exciting tutorial. I've worked on a teaser for a client and I've made a similar transition for it, so I thought I'll just share it with the community. It's a very simple tutorial, so all you need is After Effects and you've made a new comp. Place your logo inside that comp. And um, it's a simple logo. You can even make it here in After Effects or drag your own logo into this layer. So make a new composition called Bevel Logo. Drag and drop your logo into this. And next up, make a new solid layer. Call it Hexagon. Simply search for a Hexatile. Hex tile effect and add that. Uh, I'm going to keep the settings as you can see as it is and just change the radius to 10. And you can see that hex tile effect applied all over the image. I'm going to pick up another effect called invert, apply that, change the channel to alpha, make sure you do that. So, what you'll do is basically revert both the channels. Now, the hexagon layer, select that and click the transparency icon. Next up, make another solid layer, choose noise effect and drag and drop it, keep the settings the way I've kept them and you will um, change the blending mode to multiply, change the blending mode of the layer to multiply as well and enable transparency so that part only applies to the logo itself. Now both your hexagon and noise layers have transparency on so you can only apply those effects to your particular logo area. I have a background, I'll search for a great effect and that background is just a simple solid layer. Add that grid effect, keep the settings to what I've kept here and you will basically achieve the similar background effect that I have on my screen. It's just a simple black background. And next up, I'll make a new solid layer, call it CC Glass. Add a CC Glass effect with the following settings. Change the bump map to beveled logo, which we've created before. Set the softness to zero and displacement to zero and lighting to AE lights. If you enable this layer, glass layer, you can see similar sort of effect happening that there is some sort of bump taking place. I'll go back to my bevel logo layer, add a new effect called inner glow and change the settings to uh, blend mode to normal. Uh, I'm keeping my color type to gradient. Modify the gradient a little bit like this. Um, change the technique to precise edge. I think that's fine. So now you can see that um, our logo is a little bit more 3D-like, a bit more pronounced. I'll move the glass layer below Bevel logo and activate the track mat to alpha. So the effect is only applied to our logo. Now I'll create a new light, call it point light. It's just adjusting uh, the intensity of light and position of light. That's up to you. Uh, just duplicate the light again and put it down here to just lit up the lower portion of the logo as well. Create a new adjustment layer, add curves to it. And here I'll just slightly change the curves to improve my logo and background. See, activating and disactivating will give me that sort of look. I will make a new transition composition. These are just audio files. It's just a few uh, different glitches. You can keep them or you may delete them. Uh, I've got my logo, um, mid-screen logo, imported into this. Drag and drop your mid-screen logo into your transition composition. Uh, call it mid-screen down and just add the CC light burst effect. I've added two keyframes to it. I'm just basically animating the intensity from one to uh, from 100 to 200. As you can see, this are going down and up. And then the ray length, of course, which is dropping from uh, both 200 to zero and ray length from 100 to zero. That's the only two keyframes that I've made here. So next up, I've added an effect called CC Tyler and basically just uh, did a bit of uh, scaling and uh, animated the keyframe, the scale keyframe here, once again by placing two keyframes, and it's dropping from 100 to 20%. That's all when it is doing, right? You can scale it down to your will and wish, but that's somewhere I felt appropriate. All right, so next up, what I did was basically added another effect called transform. I would just want to change the position of it and change a little bit of skew towards one of the directions. So in my bottom area, I'm gonna exit it out, uh, skewing on the right side. So I will move the transform keyframes a little bit and move the skew keyframe a little bit towards right as well. As you can see by the end of it, it's just moving a little bit towards the right and that's how it exits. Finally, just move the position a little bit towards the right manually as well. And that's really it. All the three effects are added. I just copied the mid-screen down layer once again, called it mid-screen up, and changed the mask to from inverted back to normal. You can see the above logo appearing. 
and all of these animations will remain the same i'll just change a little bit of timing just move them here and there and invert the um, invert the parameters so they are going in the opposite direction so if there is a plus i'll change that to minus so it's going the other way around so you can see all oh, this layer is exiting towards the top left side and the bottom one is exiting towards the bottom right side Next up, added an adjustment layer. This is just a beauty layer and created just single opacity frames. Um, it's an on, off, on, off, 100%, 0, 100%, 0%. So you can see this just um, added just a channel mixer effect to it by red color to it. And that's really it. After that, these single keyframes will just add a little bit of color glitch to the whole uh, transition. Finally, you can just, your transition is ready. If you turn on the transparency, you can see this transition working for you. There you go. It's ready to be placed into your any of your comp or any of your videos. I've got my teaser comp here. I've got a couple of clips going on here. On top of that, I've placed these transitions. And if I just play it back now, um, just render and play it back and that's it. You can just play a space bar and see this working on top of your video layers. So that's it. I hope that you've enjoyed this quick and tidy tutorial about this uh, glit sort of animation for your upcoming projects. If you like what you've seen, if you like what you hear, then it subs and like would always be amazing. I'll see you in the next video. Till again, Forest Tech, signing out.